Okay. All right. February 4th. This is a little bit out of section 6-2, a little bit out of 6-3. All right. We're continuing this because we're just dealing with some more stuff on differential equations. And I'm going to abbreviate because I'm going to run out of room here for now. Okay, so it, we're going to deal with more on differential equations. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so hopefully up to this point, all right, you've, you've seen a connection to all of this, hopefully now. All right, your slope field is what? It's a visual representation of the solution of a differential equation. Okay, that slope field gives us a visual of what the answer to the differential equation should look like. All right, now our Euler's method, what did that do? That gave us a numerical approximation for the solutions of our differential equations. So we've been messing around with these differential equations in a variety of different ways, looking at them visually, looking at them from a numerical way, all right? And up to now, we have only done first order differential equations. All right, we've done first order differential equations, which, and they were all separable. So that meant we could put all of our X's on one side, we could put all of our Y's on the other side, and then life was nice because then we could integrate both sides, okay? Now there are, which we're not necessarily gonna do this, but there are second order differential equations, and then there are third order differential equations, okay? So, um, Let's just take a look at a second order. All right, well, actually, let's take a look at a first order. All right, our first order ones, the ones we were messing with, our first order differential equation. Okay, what did it look like? It was like a dy over a dx equals maybe say an x squared, like little baby ones, right? Now, <clears throat> what's that? What is this? What's this mean? It means the derivative, right? It means the first derivative, right? Thus, first order differential equation. Okay, now a second order differential equation, which we're not gonna do that because this is only calc one. So we're not gonna solve them. So don't panic or anything. You would do this in like about a calc three, calc two, calc three, okay? All right, might look like this, d2y over dx squared plus 3y dy over dx plus 2x squared y equals zero. <clears throat> All right, that's an example of a second order differential equation. Okay, well, why? Because isn't that a second order derivative? Okay, this is your first order derivative, but this is a second order. So if that's my second derivative, this is a second order differential equation. And then could I keep going? Could I do a d to the third, y, d, x to the third? And that would be a third order. And then I could do a fourth order and then I could do a fifth order and I could get ridiculous. Okay, all right. So in Calc 1, the only thing we have to do is the only thing we're gonna do is separable first order differential equations, okay? And up to now, we've been doing super, super easy ones. And we're just gonna bump it up just a little. We're just gonna bump it up just a little, okay? All right, <clears throat> so good so far. A lot of just kind of verbal, kind of putting together everything we've done to this point. Okay, now let's just do some examples here. <clears throat> All right, let's do a dy over a dx. <clears throat> and then let's say that's equal to a y plus a three. Okay, so what have we done? We have separated them. But in the past, the only thing we had to do is multiply both sides by dx, put it over there on that right-hand side, and we were good to go, which I still need to do that. But I also need to do what? I need to take this y plus 3 and move it over to the left. So you're really going to have to work now at separating the variables. Okay, so one step at a time. All right, multiply by dx. And then this is a binomial. Multiply by that dx, okay? So the dx is crossed out. So that's moving my dx, getting that over on that side. Okay. Now I'm going to rewrite dy 
equals y plus three. I'm gonna keep in mind that is a binomial. Okay, now, if I wanna get it to the other side, divide, we're gonna divide by it. Okay, so I'm gonna divide by a y plus three. All right, now what's imaginary sitting in front of this dy? There's a one, right? So really when I divide, I've got a y plus a three over here, okay? Now, again, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. So I have a one over y plus three dy is equal to a dx. All right, now, have I got them separated? Okay, once I separate, then now I can integrate both sides. Now, this, <clears throat> would be a u substitution, but with it being just a plain y plus three, no negatives, nothing funky in here. Can I integrate this really quick in my head? Yeah, it's gonna be what? Natural log of absolute value y plus three, right? And some of you might have to do the u substitution, but if you don't have to, then it's great. So natural log absolute value y plus three. All right, now, can we integrate this side? That's a one dx. So when I integrate that, I'm just going to get a x and then plus c. Because I integrated, so we want a plus c. So everybody with me so far? Okay. Now, what's the base on the natural log function? An e, right? So this equation is in logarithmic form, right? Don't we know how to go back and forth between logarithmic form and exponential form? Okay, we should. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it in exponential form. All right, I'm going to write it into exponential form. So it's going to be e raised to the, and this is a binomial, x plus c is equal to absolute value y plus 3. So when I get to this natural log equation, I'm going to go from logarithmic form to exponential form. Okay, now my next step, I don't want the E on the left-hand side, okay? So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna come up here and I'm just going to switch them just so that my absolute value stuff is on the left. And that's just a me thing, okay? So absolute value Y plus three is equal to E raised to the X plus C. And I don't necessarily need to have that set of parentheses around there. Hopefully I, you realize that's a binomial anyway. Okay, now, this right here, E raised to the X plus C. Think laws of exponents. Think I'm going to undo some laws of exponents. What if I multiply like bases, I add the exponents, right? If I multiply like bases, I add the exponents. So then this, if I undo that laws of exponents, had to be an e to the x times an e to the c, right? I undid my laws of exponents, all right? So undo laws of exponents. I had to undo that, all right? Left-hand side of the equation, I'm not gonna mess with it all. Yes. <clears throat> okay, now, what is c? When I put a plus c on here, what is that? It's a constant, it's a number, right? Well, what's E? E's a number too, E's another constant. So if I had a constant raised to a constant, then don't I just have another constant? But it can't be C, because I've already used C. So I gotta let something else represent that. So we're going to let that be K, all right? It is a constant. So you have got to say somewhere in your work, let e to the c equal k. You, whoever is reading your paper, you've got to tell them, because if you're just going to randomly throw in a different letter in there, you got to tell them where it came from. Okay, so then I'm going to have absolute value of y plus three is equal to, now, can I put that in front of my easy x? So k e to the x. Okay, now I want to address the absolute value bars. 
All right, isn't that the distance from zero? So positive or negative, plus or minus. So if I want to be able to legally drop those, then all I got to do is add a plus or minus on the right hand side. Now, if I solve for y by subtracting three from both sides, I'm going to have a y equals, and then I'm going to have a plus or minus, a k e to the x minus three. Do I now have a general solution where I could plug in if I knew x and y, I could plug in an x and y up a point, and then I could find k? So at that point right there, I have a general solution. Now, what I want to say about this plus or minus k, <clears throat> all right, that plus or minus k, what's going to happen is when you go to find the particular solution, you're going to have a point and you're going to plug in x, you're going to plug in y, and then you'll be able to figure out what k is. Sometimes when you do that, k is going to be positive. Sometimes when you plug it in, k is going to be negative. So that's what this is representing, plus or minus k, meaning that constant could be positive. It could be negative, depending on how I work it out and what the constraints are that I plug in. Okay, so that's all that represents. Okay, but these are your new steps. When you get to a logarithmic equation here, you go from logarithmic to exponential form. Okay, then I switch the two, okay, because I like this on the left. All right, then I take this and I undo my laws of exponents. I replace e to the c with a k, but I got to tell everybody, hey, this is why I'm doing it, what I'm doing. And then I drop the absolute value bars and put the plus or minus in. So there's your extra steps. Okay, so actually not too bad. 